on. Oh my gosh. It appears to be a beautiful moonlit summer night outside tonight here on a, it is a Thursday night, April 18th, 2024. And so, as you know, I am winding down my days here at Doomsday Trailer. How many more cups of coffee at the dock do I have? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Six more times the little dog and I will be heading down to the dock uh, with our planet saving cup of organic coffee before uh, packing it up and heading north again. So uh, I've just been thinking back about over the last six months and uh, the meetings with the, uh, I, I, I've mentioned this group of, this loose-knit group of what I will call the uh, old men with broken teeth stranded at without love club that have nothing to do uh, with, with their lives. You know, I'm, I'm talking about a, a bunch of us old boomers uh, every one of us male that just tend to gravitate uh, toward the dock and uh, you know getting to know each other a little bit and stuff uh, so this morning I had the pleasure of, of having a semi-intelligent conversation I am so thrilled every time I I find something bordering on an intelligent conversation uh, where, well in this case, four grown men can get together and just have a conversation, have a wide-ranging conversation about a variety of topics, uh, not always uh, agreeing with each other, but being polite and civil and humorous and whatnot and uh, nobody getting all you know that kind of stuff and uh, that, that you get so much of now whenever you find someone who does not agree with 100% of every word that comes out of your mouth. You get the ah! 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 response and uh, so probably the reason we had a a borderline intelligent uh, discussion is because uh, the name Donald Trump uh, never came up uh, for instance and no no talk about the the porno queen trial or whatever so uh, what it was there were four of us ranging in a I was probably one of the younger ones but probably in the 64 to 75 year uh, age range uh, so three of us are snow well two of us were snowbirds. A, a, a snowbird is a Yankee who comes south for the winter. Is the, it, 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 are you fought The difference is that I am a sunbird. My original driving force <clears throat> of going to New York was to escape the summer heat in the south so while I do come south in the winter my original uh, impetus for getting the place in New York was getting away from the heat in the south but, but however you want to slice it uh, three of us uh, spend our summers up north and our winters down here in Denellum, Florida and the fourth fellow is a full-time resident. 
of the of the knowledge. So three out of the four of us are starting to pack up and getting our old boomer asses uh, the hell out of Denellan, Florida to points far flung across the the Northeast US. And so th three of us were in, you know, in pretty solid agreement that uh, the older you get, the more it sucks to be both cold in the winter and hot in the summer. You can just settle down. You don't need to be running off. He said, Pop, I don't want to hear your boring old boomer stories. I had to listen to it once today down at the dock with you boring old farts, and now you're boring all these people and me repeating the goddamn story, and nobody gives a fuck what four old... Uh, men with broken teeth stranded without love think about a goddamn thing. So anyway, we got into, you know, talking about how you grow older, that your temperature range, <clears throat> your acceptable temperature range uh, gets smaller and smaller the older you you get, you, you know, I used to, I, I can actually remember saying uh, earlier in my life that uh, I, I'm pretty much okay anywhere if the temperature is between 30 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's under 30, it's a little too cold. If it's over 100, it's getting too hot. Well, now at 64, we were all uh, you know, talking about our, our acceptable temperature ranges, and mine has pretty much shrunk uh, by age 64 to uh, about 52 to 85 and the outside, and it's really about 55 to 75 that if it's colder than 55 fucking degrees it's too goddamn cold if it's hotter than 75 it's too goddamn hot and I figure I was saying you know by the time I die uh, that uh, my temperature range is probably going to be between like 71 and 73 degrees and I uh, so I, I was getting a, a, a lot of agreement with the, uh, mainly from the snowbirds. And, and, the, and the guy from Denellen, you know, when he, uh, <clears throat> you know, found out that I w w was a native southerner and that I call myself a sunbird, that uh, he was a little taken aback by that. He just always assumed, even with my accent, I guess, that uh, I, I was some goddamn Yankee getting away from the cold winters. And of course, he wants nothing to do with the cold winter, uh, being, a, being a Southerner. But, but he was just, you know, saying to all three of us, but, but especially to me, like, like, dude, what, what's your problem? Just turn on the fucking air conditioner. You know, it was 11 o'clock this morning, and, and, and we were already packing up down on the dock to uh, head back home. Today was the first day I've turned on the air conditioner, and, and, and I said, well... You know, running the air conditioner, I said it's fine and dandy, but what it implies is that you're going to be stuck inside your house, or in, in, in my case, as I told him, a damn single wide trailer, that it, what you were doing is for the next six months that after at the latest, 11 o'clock in the morning, you were, uh, since, since we're all somewhat retired, uh, that, that, that you were basically 
just you know cowering in your house on, on uh, you know in front of the damn air conditioner so you don't die of fucking heat stroke and he's looking at me like uh, uh, like well what's the problem and and, and I said I, I don't know brother I, I said I'm just one of these guys who basically considers you know being inside that that I go inside to sleep I it, like when I'm in New York once I get back to New York I pretty much non sleeping hours non sleeping hours if I spend one hour per day one hour per day uh, inside which uh, which means inside a tiny house I would be surprised if I spend one hour per day inside, except when I'm asleep. Basically, my tiny houses, as uh, Rob calls them, he calls them bedrooms in the forest. He goes, these aren't tiny houses, Hambone. These are bedrooms in the forest. And, and, and that's exactly what they are. I, 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 go, uh, I, I go inside uh, and go straight to bed. I get up in the morning, uh, make my damn coffee, and, and, and go right outside. And there I stay. And so I, I spend 16 hours a day, seven days a week uh, in, in, in the summer up there in New York. And I would like to be doing that, uh, th those hours in Florida, and I, I don't spend that much time outside in these, you know, November to uh, May in, in, in Florida, but, but, but pretty close to it. Uh, it, it just that it gets dark at, uh, at goddamn 6 o'clock in the winter, and, and even in Florida, uh, you know, it, it gets below 55 degrees most nights, so I probably, it's from, well, from dark, maybe a little bit after dark until bedtime, I, uh, I, I'm stuck inside in the winter, but, uh, but, but who the fuck wants to be inside? I, I'm like, dude, <clears throat> What do you do? What the fuck do you do uh, with yourself all day? Uh, just camping out in front of your uh, air conditioner seven fucking days a week for, for the next six months. Of course, I was a little bit more polite. And he goes, well, you know, there's all kinds of stuff to do. I can, I can get on the computer. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can. And I'm like, oh my fucking god, am I here all alone? And, and, and all three of us are, 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 are just looking at the guy and, and uh, just agreeing that that's not us. It, there, 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 there's just two kinds of people in the world, I guess, and, and, and that uh, is, is, is one kind of person uh, doesn't mind spending, uh, good Lord, uh, what, uh, 18 to 20 hours a day uh, inside. Uh, the, the, the very thought of it uh, horrifies me. Uh, I, I, I want nothing to do with that. Uh, but it's fine, you know, it, it, it's fine, it's, uh, it, it's not like we were in an argument over this, I, we were just agreeing, uh, there, there's different kinds of people in the world, there, 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 there's people like him, and there's people like me, uh, that's fine, different strokes for different folks, blah, 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 and then, uh, so the conversation, it, yes, of course, uh, Yes, little dog? What are you snorkeling about? Do you need the uh, collapsed trachea treatment? I don't want to hear any snorkeling from my little dog. And so, of course, we had to have our few-minute uh, bitch session 
uh, about millennials and Gen Zers, how they're the single laziest motherfucking good for nothing pieces of shit uh, ever born, trying to get anybody uh, uh, under the age of fucking 50 to show up for fucking work. To, to do a goddamn uh, honest day's worth of work. So we get into that bitch session uh, uh, about these lazy, worthless, goddamn uh, people under the age of 60 who have never known a, a hard day's work in their entire life. And that uh, quickly evolved into, uh, in, in, into basically another two kinds of people and that is the wage slaves versus the uh, versus people and I'm talking mostly guys here because it was it was four guys hanging out you, you, you know who were never happy with the wage slavery and so we just had all of our we, we, we were just laughing about all of our various crazy business adventures, uh, business ventures that we'd gotten into, some of them a lot more successful than others, uh, you, you know, guy kind of things and stuff. And, and uh, again, the, the guy from Dunellen, who, who not surprisingly, I guess, is the guy now that he's retired has no problem just sitting around inside his house uh, on his fucking computer or watching TV or whatever he does that he was just a you know a company man uh, clock pusher I, 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 I don't even know it's not even important uh, what he did but he was basically and, 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 and again, I am not talking shit about wage slaves. Uh, he just, uh, you know, he got out of college and, and, and he basically went to work. He, he punched the fucking uh, time clock uh, and uh, did his fucking job uh, and, and lived a pretty comfortable life. Uh, he didn't. Uh, he, he was never under any financial freakout. He never had to risk or gamble his money. He, he never uh, had to worry about uh, you, you know downturns and uh, slow times in his business. The you know he he went right on through. Uh, economic cycles going up and down, the stock market going up, the stock market going down, recessions here, whatever, and for uh, 40 fucking years he showed up at the office and, and uh, got the paycheck at the end of the week and, and you know, made his mortgage payments and, uh, you know, probably bought the new car every five years uh, had his little vacation planned uh, six months ahead of time where, where he was going to go uh, on his fucking two weeks of vacation, whatever. And, and, and the other three of us who are now snowbirds, uh, well, the two snowbirds and the sunbird, but, but, but basically uh, not content to, you know, to hide out in front of their air conditioner, uh, you know, here we were uh, with our checkered employment histories that, uh, you know, one guy, I think he was a fishing guide for a lot of years, and then there were there was some real estate dabbling. Uh, I, I was the main... Uh, real estate investor voice, you know, flipping houses and uh, the other. And we'd all like flipped a little bit, but you know, I, I've flipped like what 24, 25 properties now. And, and uh, 
And it just got to, to the discussion that there's basically two kinds of people. Uh, each camp, uh, like, like, like anything in the world, you can put on a, 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 a cost-benefit ratio. There is no such thing as the perfect job. It, it, it doesn't exist. But, but you basically, and in, in, in pretty early in life, you need to make the essential choice, what path am I going to take? Okay, uh, am I going to take the wage slave uh, path, uh, or, or am I going to take the, the much more dangerous uh, landmine ridden path of, of trying out different ways of you know running my own business uh, being my own boss not letting uh, some other person usually another man uh, tell me what to fucking do uh, and not having some fucking dude, sure as shit, not having some woman uh, to, to, to tell what to do, not you know, and not having some giant fucking corporation, uh, you know, who knows, Walmart, Exxon, whatever. Uh, but but you know, I, I, I'm not knocking. Those kind of people, and, and, and of course, there have been times in my life uh, where, where I've, uh, you, you know, asked myself, uh, why the fuck uh, didn't you go the wage slave route? I, I mean, when you when you go the wage slave slash salaried route, you, you basically what do you what do you have to do? Uh, you you have to show up. Number one, you have to show up, and well, I, I'm a Virgo, okay? Uh, if I tell you uh, I'm going to be there, I am going to be there. I am going to show up. All right, so, uh, you know, that part of wage slavery, but you, I'm good at. I will show up, but you, you what do you have to do? You... You have to show up, you have to mind your manners, uh, I, you have to uh, keep your fucking mouth shut and not piss off your boss. Well, I, I have no problem, I, I mean I have a problem uh, with, with the showing up part uh, five days a fucking week. Uh, 50 weeks a year for 40 fucking years in a row, but, uh, but th that, that, but if I tell you I'm going to show up, I'm going to show up, but I, but you know, I, I do have a problem, you guys might have noticed, uh, with minding my manners, keeping my mouth shut, and uh, as you can imagine, I have a, 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 a problem with not getting authority figures pissed off at me. I don't do well with authority figures. Okay, authority figures are threatened by me. I don't know why, but I just don't do well uh, with, with some motherfucker telling me what to do. Uh, for uh, you know, for a goddamn paycheck, but uh, you know, for for people with the personality, and, and, and I have plenty of friends who are uh, wage slave salaried uh, people uh, who do the uh, clock punching and the fucking getting in the goddamn uh, commute. Uh, and, 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 and all of this shit, and they seem perfectly fine with it. You know, my dear sweet ex-wife, who I was married to for seven years, she, she had absolutely no problem with it. I loved it. I, I was a freelance journalist. 
when uh, we were married, you know, for those, uh, for five of the seven years, uh, you know, with my income, uh, I, I could depend uh, on my dear sweet ex-wife getting in her fucking car, getting in that goddamn traffic jam every morning, the goddamn traffic jam every afternoon, uh, going in, pulling in the damn paycheck. Uh, I, I was totally fine with it. We probably would have been fucked uh, if she had had a problem with it and had wanted to be some sort of freelance uh, whatever. Uh, so thank God uh, she was. It, it, it's the reason we were able to buy our first home. Uh, you know, most of the wage slaves that I know, uh, you know, I mean, I look at their lives, and, and they, and the ones I know, that uh, they live in nice homes, they drive nice cars, uh, they, they, they don't seem to want for anything. And, and if, if, if you're satisfied with that lifestyle, go for it. Uh, this, uh, this global industrial civilization would be pretty fucked if uh, the majority of people uh, were, were not satisfied w w with playing that game. Showing up, minding your manners, keeping your mouth shut, and, and not pissing off your boss. Thank God. Uh, could, could you imagine uh, what this planet would look like uh, tomorrow if, if every single wage slave uh, on the planet said, fuck you, uh, take this job and shove it, uh, ain't gonna work here no more. We'd be fucked. And so I'm not knocking these guys. And, it, and it's not like we were, we were ganging up on this dude. My guess is that if you looked back over the last 40 years, uh, my guess is that he probably uh, led in a lot of ways a, a much more quote, stable existence. He, he never knew uh, what, what, you know, the fear of, uh, of some financial catastrophe, you know, something, you know, finding, uh, finding insurance and health care. Yeah, right. Do you think I have fucking insurance, health care, uh, and, 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 and that type of stuff, but but I just uh, over a lifetime uh, have traded the, uh, the 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 quote comfort and stability that comes w with minding my manners, keeping my fucking mouth shut, and not pissing off authority figures. Uh, I, I I am so bad. At, at, at those three, that my fear of doing that is, is bigger than the fear uh, of being, you know, of taking the various uh, financial and personal risks uh, that that I've taken. And, uh, and and these other two guys, this was the general theme of our uh, 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 of our conversation. And uh, my guess, if you put it on a bell curve, that the meat of the bell curve are going to be the wage slave 40 hour a week workers are, are going to make up the meat of the bell curve. And, 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 and then the, uh, you know, the, the guys uh, living in single wide trailers uh, with, with the fucking uh, dead van on blocks parked out front and the fucking pit bull. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, who don't have any fucking money. Uh, and, and like that, they 
are, they make up one end of the bell curve because uh, they, they never found the self-discipline and, and the drive to get off their fat, lazy asses, take a few risks and put their, and, and get out there and get to work and, and, they, and, and then the other side of the bell curve would be, um, you, you, you know, the guys who made it, uh, who took the goddamn risks. Uh, so you're gonna you're gonna end up in in, in one of those two areas of the bell curve. Uh, so you know, obviously, no shit, Sherlock. Uh, I have a, a a few regrets, but very few regrets about uh, about making the uh, career choices uh, that I've made in my life. Uh, as I've said many times, uh, if, if, if my only goal had been to make money, especially in real estate investing, I need to see if this fucking camera's even on. Yeah, so, if my goal uh, from the time I, I graduated from college in 1982 until now. The, the, the only goal that I set for myself was making fucking money and, and, and surrounding myself with all of this, this stuff. Uh, I could have made a hell of a lot more money than I did. My problem, not my problem, my just kind of my pattern would be uh, this is what my income looks like. I remember the woman at Social Security uh, told me I had the, the most bizarre income stream over a, a lifetime that she had ever seen in her life. That what I would do is uh, I would get manic. Uh, I would bust my ass, m m make a bunch of fucking money, uh, sock away a, a, a bunch of money, and, and, and then I would uh, take off. Uh, I would head down to fucking Costa Rica and, and hang out at the beach for a year. Uh, I would run my money down. Uh, my money would run down. Uh, I would cut my fucking hair. Uh, and, and, and go back to selling real estate, uh, flipping a house or two, make a pile of money, uh, spend it down, and this is what I've been doing. Uh, but but I, I, I could have made a shitload more money. Uh, I, I, I could be, I honestly believe I, there's no reason that uh, I, I could not be a multi-millionaire li living in one of these goddamn houses uh, out in the northwest hills of Austin, Texas, and, and uh, you know, all that shit. It holds no fucking interest for me. Which is why I'm sitting here in, in, in this single wide trailer at the end of this dirt road uh, in a swamp in Florida. And two weeks from now, you know, for the next six months, I'll be living in a tiny house. Uh, but anyway, it, 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 you know, any choice you make, uh, it, it doesn't matter uh, whether you're a, a whether you're a snowbird, whether you stay in one place uh, for the year, whether you're a wage slave, whether you're a, a quote gambler and go out and make your own way through the scary world, uh, whatever it is, there there's going to be advantages and disadvantages. It, it, it doesn't matter what it is, where you live, what job you fucking, whatever, uh, it, it, it's going, there's going to be trade-offs. And uh, I, I, I am simply not willing to, uh, 
to, to sit in this damn trailer all summer hiding out in front of the air conditioner uh, any more uh, than, than over the last 40 years I, I, I would be willing to, uh, you know, go punch a fucking time clock and, and, and deal with these clueless fucking moron bosses and co-workers and good fucking God, the thought of it. But anyway, that was, uh, that was just kind of what uh, the four of us Old uh, old men with broken teeth, stranded and without love, were uh, talking about it. The dock this morning, and uh, I don't know why I just spent all that time uh, saying that, realizing I'm sitting here talking to myself. Uh, but anyway, I guess I'll wrap up now and. Uh, I guess I'll head over to Netflix while I still can. Uh, bye, guys. Okay, dog, you can get up and go wherever you want to. No more old man with broken teeth sitting here blabbing about nothing. <laughs>